This, we all know, is a standard factorial where we put an exclamation mark in front of a number. Like 4 factorial equals 4 times, 3 times, 2 times 1, which is equal to 24. And any n factorial equals n times n minus 1, and so on, times 2 times 1. But do you know that we have other types of factorials as well? And today we will explore almost all of them. Double factorial. We represent it using a number followed by a double exclamation mark in front of it. For an odd number like 9, it's the product of all odd numbers from 9 down to 1. So, we multiply 9 times, 7 times, 5 times, 3 times, 1. Then, in the case of an even number like 8, double factorial equals 8 times, 6 times, 4 times, 2. Then, if we keep extending this idea, we get a multifactorial. Here, instead of decreasing by 1 or 2, like in single or double factorials, we decrease by a fixed number, k. So, an n multifactorial of order k means we multiply n times n minus k times n minus 2 times k, and so on until we reach a number that is greater than or equal to 1, but the next step would go below 1. For example, 7 multifactorial of order 3 would be 7 times 4 times 1. Next up, we have rising factorial, which we denote like this. It means we multiply x times x plus 1 times x plus 2 and so on until we do this n times in total. So this last term will be x plus n minus 1, because remember, we started from 0 here and not 1. So this will be n terms. For example, if we take the rising factorial of 3 with subscript 4, it will be 3 times, 4 times, 5 times, 6. It is called rising because the numbers keep increasing in each step. Similarly, we have falling factorial, which is just the opposite of rising factorial. It means we multiply x times x minus 1 times x minus 2, and so on until we do this n times in total. So the last term will be x minus n plus 1, because again, we are taking n terms starting from x and going down. For example, if we take the falling factorial of 6 with subscript 3, it will be 6 times 5 times 4. It is called falling because the numbers keep decreasing with each step. Next up is superfactorial, which sounds quite powerful, and it actually is. There are a couple of ways people define it, but one common version is where we take the factorials of all numbers from 1 up to n and multiply them all together. We denote it with a number n followed by a dollar sign. So a superfactorial of 4 would be 1 factorial times, 2 factorial times 3 factorial times 4 factorial. That is 1 times 2 times 6 times 24, which gives 288. It grows really fast compared to the regular factorial. Then we have factorial tetration. Factorial tetration is when we take a number n, first calculate its factorial, and then perform tetration using that result like n factorial tetration, n factorial. Tetration means repeated exponentiation, just like multiplication is repeated addition and exponentiation is repeated multiplication. For example, 3 tetration, 4, means 3 raised to the power of 3, raised to the power of 3, raised to the power of 3, with 4 3s stacked like a tower. Now if we take just n equals 3, then 3 factorial is 6, and factorial tetration becomes 6 raised to the power of 6 raised to the power of 6, and so on, 6 times. This number is far, far larger than 10 raised to the power 80, which is the estimated number of atoms in the entire observable universe. Next up, we have hyperfactorials. Instead of just multiplying numbers like 1 times 2 times 3 and so on, in a hyperfactorial, we raise each number to the power of itself before multiplying. So for example, a hyperfactorial of 3 would be 1 to the power 1 times 2 to the power 2 times 3 
to the power 3. That is 1 times 4 times 27, which equals 108. Let me know in the comments what will be the hyperfactorial of 4. Then we have a gamma function, which is a continuous extension of factorial. While factorial is only defined for whole numbers, the gamma function, or this integral, lets us calculate something like factorial for decimal and even complex numbers. It plays a huge role in higher mathematics, especially in calculus, probability, and complex analysis. One of the most fascinating results of the gamma function is when we plug in one half. Gamma of one half is equal to the square root of pi. That's right, gamma of one half equals root pi, which connects factorials to geometry in a very surprising way. Then we have a primorial. This means we multiply all prime numbers up to n, and we denote it using this hash sign. For example, the primes up to 7 are 2, 3, 5, and 7. So we do 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 to get primorial of 7. Noise. Now this is interesting. Look at it carefully. We have n with an exclamation mark, but it is not after n. Instead, it is placed as a prefix. This is called a subfactorial, which counts how many ways we can arrange n items so none of them are in their original spots. Like, suppose we have three letters A, B, and C like this. Can you write all the possible ways to arrange these three letters? First, we can write A, B, and C. Then keep A fixed and swap B and C to get A, C, and B. Now, let's fix B at the beginning. After that, we can arrange the remaining two letters, A and C, in two ways. B, A, and C, and then B, C, and A. Finally, let's fix C at the beginning and arrange the rest. That gives us C and A and B, and finally C, B, and A. So, in total, we have six different arrangements of these three letters. This is where factorial comes into the picture. Since we are arranging three different letters, we calculate the total number of arrangements using 3 factorial, which gives us 3 times 2 times 1 or 6. And that's exactly the number of different arrangements we got. Now in the case of a subfactorial, we count how many ways we can arrange A, B, and C, so that none of them are in their original spots. For that, suppose the initial arrangement is A, B, and C. Now, from these six possible arrangements, remove all the A from the first position, which means this and this will get cancelled out. Now, remove all the B from the second position, which means this and this will get cancelled out. Now, remove all the C from the third position, which means this and this will get cancelled out. So these four arrangements do not count in case of subfactorial, because now, None of them are in their original position when compared with this initial arrangement. This is the way to calculate a subfactorial. In case of three subfactorial, write 1 over 0 factorial minus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial minus 1 over 3 factorial. Now we solve each term. 1 over 0 factorial is 1. 1 over 1 factorial is 1. 1 over 2 factorial is 1 divided by 2. 1 over 3 factorial is 1 divided by 6. 1 minus 1 is 0. Then 1 divided by 2 minus 1 divided by 6 gives us 1 divided by 3. After that, we multiply the answer with 3 factorial, which is 6. So we do 6 times 1 divided by 3, which gives 2. That means the subfactorial of 3 is 2. This tells us that there are two ways to arrange three items in such a way that none of them remains in their original place. This kind of arrangement is called a derangement. Okay, let me know in the comments what will be the subfactorial of 7. Then we have exponential factorial. Instead of multiplying numbers or raising them to themselves, here we build a power tower starting from 1 up to n. So an exponential factorial of 4 would be 1 raised to the power, 2 raised to the power, 
3 raised to the power 4. Easy peasy. Finally, we have quantum factorial, which comes from the world of quantum mathematics and is used in areas like quantum groups and Q calculus. Instead of regular numbers, we deal with what's called Q numbers. A Q number for any N is written as open bracket N close bracket with a small Q, and it is equal to 1 minus Q to the power N divided by 1 minus Q. So the quantum factorial of N is the product of all Q numbers from 1 to N. For example, if N is 3 and Q is 2, then open bracket 1 close bracket Q is 1, open bracket 2 close bracket Q is 3, and open bracket 3 close bracket Q is 7. So the quantum factorial becomes 1 times 3 times 7, which is 21. It's like a flexible version of factorials that depends on the value of Q. And when Q gets close to 1, the quantum factorial becomes the same as the usual factorial. So goo.